Alright, um, we shall start now. Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, today we're going to start with a new topic under chapter number 3, which is uh, Neyman Pearson Lemma. Right? So, the, as introduction, so the theory of hypothesis testing, right, uh, such as... Uh, 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 null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis is referred as a classical hypothesis or traditional hypothesis. This is based on Neyman person lemma. So usually we limit ourselves to test statistic for which the probability of type 1 error is less than or equal to the same constant alpha. So now in Neyman person lemma, a critical region for testing a simple null hypothesis, which is theta equal to theta A, is said to be the best or most powerful if the power of the test at alpha equal to alpha A is a maximum value. So it's at a maximum uh, stage. So this is what we call as a most powerful test. So now, The objective uh, of this topic is to find the most powerful region or size alpha. So we want to find the best critical region uh, for testing hypothesis uh, testing, right? So null hypothesis uh, alpha equal to alpha naught. Alternative hypothesis alpha uh, uh, sorry theta equal to theta naught. Delta equal to theta a. So this is uh, the hypothesis statement. So we in in hypothesis statement we want to find the most powerful region critical region. So this is our objective for Neyman person lemma. So before we can look into Neyman person lemma, right? Uh, we need to understand three three things. First is some notation on Neyman person lemma. Uh, second is a distinction between simple and composite hypothesis, which which is uh, on the second uh, thing that we need to understand is um, simple and composite hypothesis. So in simple and hypothesis, uh, composite hypothesis, we already look into uh, the first topic in hypothesis testing. Right. The last thing that we need to understand is the, to define what is mean to have the best critical region of size alpha. Right. So this is the objective, and um, before we look into a Neyman person lemma, we need to understand these three things. Right. Some notation, distinction between simple and composite hypothesis, and we need to define what is uh, mean for to have a best critical region of uh, size alpha. Right. So now, uh, the first thing that we need to understand is some notation. Right. Uh, basically, this is a not a really new notation that you need to understand. We already looked at this notation on chapter number two. Basically, right. Uh, if x1 until x2, xn is a random sample of size n from a distribution with a probability density or mass function f(x) theta. Right, the joint probability density or mass function of uh, random sample x1 until xn is denoted as a likelihood function. So, we need to understand the term of likelihood function of the joint PDF. Right, the likelihood function is actually a joint PDF, which means we need to multiply all function uh, from sample 1 until sample n. Right. So this is uh, the first thing that you need to understand is the likelihood function, right? So we see likelihood function, right? We need to keep in mind that the likelihood still depend on the sample data because it multiply the multiplicative of the sample, a random sample of size n, right? So now the second thing that we need to understand is a simple and composite uh, hypothesis. We have reviewed this uh, at the beginning of the chapter number three, right? So the definition of simple and composite hypothesis: if a random sample, if taken from a distribution with the parameter theta, uh, hypothesis is said to be simple hypothesis if The hypothesis is uniquely specified the distribution of the population which the sample is taken. So we have a unique or specified value for each uh, hypothesis statement, either in a null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis. 
And the composite hypothesis is any hypothesis that 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 is not a simple hypothesis, lah. So this is very clear because you already look it uh, at the beginning of uh, chapter number uh, three. Right. Now, to test our understanding, right, let's look at example number one. Right. This is uh, we want to test for uh, whether we understand uh, the difference between a simple hypothesis and composite hypothesis. Right. So now, suppose x1 until xn be a random sample from exponential distribution. Right, or with the parameter theta. So, what is the PDF of exponential distribution? Fx. So, this is exponential distribution Fx equal to 1 over theta exponential negative x over theta. So, this is the, uh, the PDF for exponential distribution where x is more than or equal to zero lah. right so under is a hypothesis null alternative hypothesis theta equal to 3 is a simple or composite hypothesis so under alternative hypothesis theta is equal to 3 so the pdf pdf for um, exponential distribution we have 1 over 3 Exponential negative x over 3, right? Where x is more than or equal to 0. Because we have we only have one uh, parameter, right? We already specified uh, theta is equal to 3. So, this hypothesis is simple hypothesis, right? So, so we already know when we have a specific value, right? So, this is a simple hypothesis, right? Now, look at example number 2. So, in example number 2, suppose that x1 until xn be a random sample from exponential distribution, right? Same exponential distribution with the parameter theta. Is the hypothesis theta is more than... To a simple or composite hypothesis. Look at the PDF of an exponential distribution 1 over theta exponential negative x over theta x is more than or equal to 0. Right? So for under null alternative hypothesis, right? Theta is more than 2. So the PDF could be, right? Uh, 1 over 3 exponential negative x over 3 or it could be 1 over 4 exponential negative x over 4 it could be 1 over 5 exponential negative x negative uh, negative x over 5 or until 1 over n exponential negative x over n right it could be many right so we cannot, uh, this is uh, not a uh, uniquely specified under the hypothesis, right? So, so because of uh, the, the parameter is not uniquely specified uh, value, so this is what we call as a composite hypothesis, right? So far, do you understand? The differentiation between uh, a simple hypothesis and composite hypothesis. Can you comment if you understand? Right, good. So now, example number three. Suppose that x1 until xn be a random sample from a normal distribution with mean equal to mu and unknown variance sigma squared. So we want to test, we want to know whether the alternative hypothesis mu is equal to 12 is a simple or composite hypothesis. Now look at the PDF of a normal distribution which is fx mu sigma squared. 
So uh, the PDF of hyper, uh, normal life distribution is sigma square root of 2 pi and this is exponential negative 1 over 2 x minus mu divided by sigma squared. So under this uh, PDF, we already know the value of uh, mu, right? Which is mu is equal to 12. So it should be 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi exponential negative 1 over 2 x minus 12 divided by sigma right so but however we we know the mu is equal to 12 but we did not know the sigma value the sigma value should be more than zero right it should be more than zero lah So since sigma is more than zero, we could have a different uh, value uh, for the sigma, and the value for the PDF should be varies lah. It should not, uh, it's, it's not a unique uh, value. So since the PDF value is not unique, so we can say that alternative hypothesis mu is equal to twelve for not this situation is a composite hypothesis right so that's how we differentiate between a simple and a composite hypothesis right so the last thing that we need to understand for before we go to uh, Neyman personal lemma is the definition of a best critical region of size alpha so, by definition, uh, consider test of null hypothesis, right? Theta is equal to theta naught against the alternative hypothesis, theta equal to theta A, right? So, we have two situations, theta equal to theta naught. This is an uh, alternative hypothesis, theta is equal to theta A, right? So, then we let C and D be a critical region of size alpha that is alpha is equal to probability of C given uh, theta naught and alpha also equal to probability of D given theta A right then C is the best critical region of size alpha if the power of the test alpha at theta equal to theta A is the largest among all possible hypothesis testing, right? So, if the theta is equal to theta A is the largest among the possible testing uh, hypothesis testing, right? So, then we can say that C is the best uh, critical region for alpha, right? So, more formally, you can say from that definition, C is the best critical region if for every critical region in D, size alpha have C is the largest value. C, uh, probability of C is uh, the highest compared to probability of D, right? That is, C is the best critical region of size alpha if the power of the C at least the greater uh, as the power of event other critical region D of size alpha. Means that... Uh, what you can say in this uh, uh, part is when we have the the largest value of uh, the probability of the largest value so then you can declare C is a best critical region right so now after we understand uh, these three things right then now we can move to Neyman person lemma right for Neyman person lemma, right, before that, do you understand right, the three things? First, we need to understand uh, some notation, which is uh, a likelihood function. Right? We already know uh, how, to develop, uh, uh, how to express the likelihood function by joining the, the probability density function. And then we also know uh, the differentiation, uh, differentiation between uh, simple and composite hypothesis. Right, and the last one is we already know the definition of best critical region. Right, the best critical region when we have the maximum value. Right, 
So, any questions so far? Ada soalan tak? Can you comment? Hello? Right. Right. Now, we move to the Neyman person lemma. Right. So, this is the most important part for this topic. Right. So, the, the suppose that we have a random sample from x1 until xn from a probability density uh, distribution function with the parameter theta. So, if C is the critical region of size alpha and K is a constant, right? K is a constant such that when the likelihood function of the null hypothesis divide by the likelihood function of the alternative hypothesis is less than or equal to K, which is inside the critical region. So, inside critical region, let's say this is a normal distribution curve. We have this is a critical region. Right, when k is inside the critical region, and this is our c, which is our critical region, so this is the formula that we're going to use. We're going to reject null hypothesis. Right, when the like the, the ratio of the likelihood function, right, ratio of the right likelihood function, right, is more than k, which is outside the critical region, right. So this is a critical region, which is C, and K is somewhere outside the critical region. So we're going to reject. Um, we're going to reject alternative hypothesis, or we're going to accept alternative and uh, null hypothesis, right? So now we're going to accept null hypothesis. Accept. Right, so then C is the best and that is the most powerful critical region for testing na simple null hypothesis against the simple alternative hypothesis. Right, so our objective is we want to find the value of K, right, value of K. So now, by this definition, we're going to look at example number 1. Right, to for our better understanding lah of a uh, Neyman person lemma. Right now, uh, look at example number one. Suppose that X is a single observation from a population with a PDF. Right, uh, this is a Bernoulli distribution. Theta multiplied with X power of theta minus one. Right, for X is between zero and one. So Find a test with the best critical region or find the most powerful test with alpha equal to 0 0.05. For testing, uh, null hypothesis theta equal to 3, alternative hypothesis theta equal to 2. Right. So, for Neyman person lemma, is only apply for a simple hypothesis. Right. We can use it for um, composite hypothesis with some modification by using a uniform uh, distribution. Right. But uh, our focus now is for a simple hypothesis. Right. Now, we check the hypothesis. First step is check hypothesis. Right. So, we have null hypothesis theta equal to 3. Alternative hypothesis theta equal to 2. So this is a simple hypothesis. Right, so this is a simple hypothesis. So second step is we need to apply a Neyman person lemma to find the mo most powerful uh, test. So second step is apply Neyman person lemma so I touch short for MPL right to find most powerful test right 
So Neyman Pasal lemma says that the uh, the ratio of the likelihood uh, theta uh, likelihood of uh, theta naught divided by the likelihood of theta a, right? So now since this is a single observation, right? We only have x value, so the null hypothesis and uh, the likelihood for null hypothesis is three, which is theta equal to three here. Right, theta is equal to three for null hypothesis. So we input into the the, the PDF value. So three multiplied with x power of two. Right, three minus one. Right, and then the the for alternative hypothesis is two multiplied with x power of one. So we will get three x power of two divided by 2x so which is also equal to 3x divided by 2 3x divided by 2 less than or equal to k so we apply the first formula right so now oops second third step is right so since we have 3x over 2 is less than or equal to k. So we try to manipulate this one. Right? Uh, x less than 2k over 3. So kita tinggal x dekat depan. Right? So we can say that 3, uh, 2k divided by 3 is set to be as C. So, kita letak this one sebagai C. So, this is equal to C. Alright. So, now, number 4, find C. So, this is the step that I am showing to you. Right. So, let alpha is equal to probability of type 1 error. Right. So, from the uh, test, we know that to find the most powerful test at alpha equal to 0 0.01. So, alpha is our type 1 error. So, 0 0.05 is equal to probability of reject null hypothesis when null hypothesis is true. Right. So, this is based on our uh, last uh, topic, right? So, our current critical region is X is less than C. Right? So, this is our current critical region because C is equal to 2K divided by 3, right? So, this is probability of X less than C. Right. When null hypothesis is true, so our null hypothesis is theta equal to 3. Right. So now theta is equal to 3. Right. So now we really don't know the value of a probability. We need to uh, to to find probability of x less than c. To find probability of x less than c, since this is a continuous distribution so we need to integrate this one right so this one should be uh, integration from 0 to c because x starting from 0 to 1 so alpha is equal to 0 0.05 this is um, when when theta is equal to 3 so we input Theta 3 equal to Masuk dalam The formula So 3 Multiply with x Power of 2 With respect to x Right So then we will get uh, X power of 3 From 0 to c This is going to be C power of 3 Equal to 0 0.05 So step number 5 so we know that c power of 3 equal to 0 
So C is equal to right set three zero point zero five. So this one should be equal to zero point three six eight. Right. So we can conclude that since we already know C is equal to zero point three six eight. So the Neyman person lemma tell us that the rejection region of the most powerful test for hypothesis Null hypothesis theta equal to 3 and alternative hypothesis theta is equal to 2 is x is less than or equal to 0 0.368. Right. So now we already know C is equal to 3, 0 0.368. So we can find K, right? If you are uh, the question asks us to find K, we can find K. Right. So far, do you have any question to solve to find the most powerful critical region using Neyman person lemma? So the step, the first step is we need to make sure the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis is a simple hypothesis. And then step number two, we apply uh, Neyman person lemma to find the most powerful test, right? We include uh, the likelihood function for null hypothesis divided by the likelihood function for alternative hypothesis less than k, right? So then we set the value of uh, include k in it, but guess c, right? So we, get, we know that x is less than c. So then we find c, right? By using uh, probability calculation, right? So we solve for c and then we will get x is less than 0 0.3. 368. So this is the most powerful critical region. So far, any question? Do you understand? Right? Good. How about others? Okay, ka? Right now, we move to the example number two. So for example number two, suppose that x1 until xn is a random sample from a normal population with mean equal to mu and variance equal to 16, right? Find the best, uh, find a test with the best critical region. Uh, that is the uh, that is find the most powerful test with the sample size n equal to 16, and the significant level alpha equal to 0 0.05 to test the simple hypothesis I did a this is a simple hypothesis mu is null hypothesis mu is equal to 10 alternative hypothesis mu is equal to 15 right so now first step we need to check right whether the hypothesis statement is simple or composite so we have null hypothesis mu is equal to 10 Alternative hypothesis, mu is equal to 15. So by looking at the PDF of a normal distribution, fx, 1 over set 2 pi, exponential negative 1 over 2, x minus mu, divided by sigma squared. So the, the sigma is equal to, the sigma squared is equal to 14. Uh, 16 the sigma is equal to 4 so we already have the va uh, specified value for sigma and the alternative hypothesis simple and alternative hypothesis having a specified value so this is a simple hypothesis right so now second step is we apply Neyman person lemma Right, so the like the ratio of the likelihood function. Neyman person lemma says that the likelihood of theta naught divided by 
likelihood of theta a less than or equal to k right so now how to solve this one we know that theta naught is equal to 10 and theta a is equal to 15 so we need to find f x 10 which is mu is equal to 10 and the the variance is equal to 16 this is 10 16 right so this one should be equal to um, 1 over wait wait I, I think we, uh, I just put the likelihood function right the likelihood function of uh, 10 right the likelihood function of 10 is equal to f x1 10 16 multiply with f x2 10 16 until f x n 10 16 so this one should be um, 1 over uh, square root of 32 pi right remember this one 16 multiply with 2 right and then uh, multiply with 2 this is 32 we kita masukkan dalam ni right so it become 32 right exponential negative 1 over 2 x minus 10 divided by 16 this is square root right and since we have the sample size for this uh, situation is 16 right the sample size is 16 so we will multiply until 16 right so this is power of 16 so for for the likelihood function for alternative hypothesis let's see this one l likelihood function theta is equal to 15 right so this one same x1 uh, 15 16 multiply with fx2 15 16 until fx 16 uh, this is 15 and 16 so it became 1 over 32 pi taking a third right, exponential negative 1 over 2 right this is x minus 6 uh, 15 divided by 16 power of 2 this is everything power of um, 16 right so because this is power of n right so so now we are taking the ratio bit of the of these two likelihood function so the ratio is l theta naught divided by l theta a right so it became uh, 1 over square root of 32 pi exponential negative 1 over 2 this is x minus 10 over 16 power of 2 power of 16 divided by and this is 1 over 32 pi right 32 pi exponential negative 1 over 2 right x minus 15 over 16 right power of 2 and this is power of 16 Right, is less than or equal to k right so we have same power 16 right so we can basically we can do uh, we can pangkah atas and bawah we can eliminate the value right so this one should be equal to 32 pi right power of negative 16 over 2 right exponential negative 1 over 32 right the summation of xi minus 10 power of 2 for this is until 16 
right so kalau kita kita simplify this one you should get this one right and bawah pun 32 pi power of negative 16 over 2 exponential negative 1 over 32 summation of xi minus 15 power of 2 this is less than or equal to k right so now we can omit this one this one with this one it should be clear right so we will get the exponential negative 1 over 32 and then uh, ni kita bawa ke atas kan so this one the summation of xi minus 10 power of 2 minus summation of xi minus 15 power of 2 this is of course until 16 from 1 until 16 right is that less than or equal to k so now this is going to be a very long uh, working right so we can expand this value right we can expand this value this value of course this value and this value can be expandable right so this one should be exponential negative 1 over 32 so this one the first part kalau kita uh, expand this one should be xi power of 2 minus 20 summation of xi right plus and this is summation of uh, 10 square right so of course until 16 this all until 16 y equal to 1 boleh nampak eh? so this one minus uh, with the, the second part which is summation of xi squared right minus summation of 30 xi plus summation of 15 squared right is less than or equal to k right so by looking at this one kita boleh padam this one right betul right um so kalau kita expand this one should be equal to uh, 1600 right and this one should be equal to 3600 right so this one and this one kita boleh tambah kan so it became exponential negative 1 over 32 right uh, 10 xi right sorry then summation of xi minus 2000 is less than or equal to k right all right okay now we finish but if you look at the the likelihood function the ratio of the likelihood function here we have the exponential value right exponential here so we don't really want the exponential value to be in our equation right so the this is step number number three for step number three right we will take a ln for both side Right. Remember, kita nak bawa the all the constant value to together with k. Right. We want to left uh, the the parameter x only. Right. So now, so this one should be equal to how much? Let's see. I'm using this color. Right. So we're taking a ln for both sides. Should be ln exponential negative one over thirty two. This is 10 summation of xi minus 2000, right? Is less than or equal to ln k, right? So, it should be negative 1 over 32, uh, 10 summation of xi minus 2000. is less than ln k, right? 
So, because ln exponential should be equal to 1. Now, so nothing much we can do here. We just take a ln for both sides. So, step number 4, we are moving constant term to the right side. Right, moving constant term to the right side. Right, so 10 summation of xi minus 2000 is more than, if the bawah this one ke sana, so it should be negative 32 ln k. Right, the bawah negative term, so the sign should be changed lah. So this one, 10 summation of xi is more than negative 32 ln k plus 2000. Right. So now, um, since our sample size is equal to 16, right? remember, right? our sample size is equal to 16, right? So we try to get the simplest thing in our equation. We try to change uh, this value to x bar. Right, so number 5, so our n is equal to 15, we try to change this value to x bar, we, we try to make it thing simple, right. So now, how are we going to do that? So we have 10 summation of xi is more than negative 32 ln k plus 2 thousand right so if i want to eliminate this one right so eliminate 10 over here what should i do i should divide the equation by 160 lah, right so i can get uh, summation of x i divide by 16 only again so i divide uh, divide the equation by 160 right so i can get n equal to 16 so i can write i x bar is equal to summation of xi divided by n so when n is equal to 16 so we will get x bar so now uh, 10 summation of xi divided by 160 Right, and negative 32 ln k plus 2000 divided by 160, right? So this one should be gone lah. So this one will represent our x bar, right? So we know that our x n is equal to 16. So this one should be x bar is equal uh, is more than or equal to negative 32 ln k minus um, kalau kita buat kurungan lah eh, minus 2000 right so divide by 160 divide by 160 kalau tak, tak cantik so 1 over 160 minus so this is our critical region right so now we set this one as C right so, we can say that our best critical region is x bar is more than or equal to c. c is equal to negative 160, uh, 1 over 160, right? 32 ln k minus 2000, right? Okay? Now, since uh, this is... Uh, x bar is more than c so we can say that this is a a, a one-sided cases right so kalau kita tengok dalam uh, normal distribution curve right so it should be somewhere here lah right so we know that our alpha is equal to 0 0.05 
So this is our alpha. The significant level is alpha 0.05. Should be on the left, on the right hand side. So this is our alpha. And the value here is 1.645. By looking at the statistical table. Right. This is a normal distribution curve from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, this is Z. Right. Okay. So now, how to find C, right? C is somewhere between here, right? So C, we want to know whether C is an inclusive K, ni, uh, inside the rejection region or outside the rejection region. If outside rejection region means we're going to accept null hypothesis, inside rejection region, we're going to reject null hypothesis. So now, we we look at um, type one error, right? Alpha equal to probability of type one error, which is also equal to probability of reject null hypothesis when null hypothesis is true. So this one should be probability of x bar more than or equal to c when our uh, 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 null hypothesis is mu is equal to 10. Mu is equal to 10. Right? So, now, if you want to convert this one, so, we, because we already know this is from a normal distribution, we can easily use Z distribution, right? So, now, probability of Z uh, is more than or equal to C minus 10 divided by our standard error is 16 over 16. So this is a, a variance. This is a n. Right? So this one should be 0 0.05. Right? So now, this one it should be equal to probability of z more than or equal to c minus 10 divided by one right so equal to 0 0.05 we know that this value is 1.645 from a statistical table right so c minus 10 equal to 1.645 so c is equal to uh, 10 bawah pisanan, this should be equal to 11.645. Right, so C is equal to 11.645. <coughs> so, apa lagi dia nak? Uh, we want to find the most powerful test with the sample size of N equal to 16. So, we already find uh, the most powerful test is the most powerful test is x bar more than or equal to c right where where c is equal to uh, 11.645 so actually the most powerful test should be x bar more than or equal to 11.645. So if you want to find, if we want to find uh, power of the test, right, power of the test. Right, when mu is equal to 15, right, so we just use a type 1, a type 2 error, lah. probability of type 2 error. Probability of type 2 error means probability of accept null hypothesis when null hypothesis is false. So, 
H A is true, right? So it should be probability of X bar more than or equal to six eleven point six four five, right? Um, when mu is equal to fifteen, right? So this one should be probability of Z more than uh, 11.645 minus 15 divided by uh, square root of 16 over 16. Right? Probability of Z more than negative 3.36. This is 0 0.9996. Right? So now tadi kita dapat apa more than c right so since our k is inside uh, the rejection region so we're going to reject null hypothesis so let's look at uh, the definition right we reject uh, we, we accept null hypothesis since the is more than k right so this is our acceptance region right so that's why, that's why, when we say that uh, acceptance accept null hypothesis, so it should be more than eleven point six four five. So everything less than one eleven point six four five is reject null hypothesis. Right. So this is very long example. Right. So do you have any question? Any questions so far? Before we move to the example number three. Right. Now, if you don't have question, means that you already terror lah. Right? So now, I will give you a time to do example number three. So, Try to do example number three. This is the same step as previous, right? So I'm giving you 15 minutes to solve for example number three. So find the most powerful critical region for size alpha, right? We have exponential distribution. Remember, when we have exponential in the ratio of the likelihood function, so we need to take a, a lon for both sides. So, so we can solve for the, the system. Now, for this uh, example, for this step, we only focus on a simple hypothesis, right? If we have a composite hypothesis, the, the, the working uh, will be slightly different. So now, um, now example number three uh, is the same step juga, sama macam uh, yang example number two, right? Um, let x1 until xn be a random sample from a exponential distribution, right? And then uh, theta, and null hypothesis theta is equal to two, and alternative hypothesis theta is equal to one, right? We want to find the most powerful. Uh, critical region right for the size alpha right so now we know that xi is having a exponential distribution with parameter theta the fx for exponential distribution is 1 over theta exponential negative x over theta where x is more than or equal to 0 right so first step is we need to check for hypothesis. So we have um, uh, theta is equal to 2 and theta is equal to 1. And by looking at the distribution, uh, probability distribution function, we only have a single parameter. So this is a simple hypothesis. 
So for a simple hypothesis, we follow the same step, right? <clears throat> so first step, the second step is we need to find the likelihood function for the null hypothesis divided by the likelihood function for alternative hypothesis, right? So this one should be f x1 until xn because we have uh, n sample for theta equal to theta naught, right? Divide by fx1 until xn where theta is equal to theta a, right? So this one should be equal to right, the likelihood function, the joint probability distribution function, uh, 1 over theta naught, power of n, exponential negative, summation of xi, divided by theta naught. Right, divide by uh, 1 over theta a, power of n, exponential negative, summation of xi over theta a, where less than k. Right, so we input the, the value into the equation. So this one should be 1 over 2 power of n because that, uh, null hypothesis theta is equal to 2, right? Exponential negative summation of xi over 2, right? And divide by 1 over uh, 1 because that alternative hypothesis theta is equal to 1, right? So, power of n exponential negative summation of xi over 1, right? Which is, this is uh, less than k. So, uh, we can do simplification for this one. So, 1 over 2 power of n exponential negative summation of xi over 2. And this one, once, yeah, can remain sebagai 1, exponential negative summation of xi over 1. So, this one should be less than k. So, we can further uh, simplify this equation. Should be equal to 1 over 2 power of n exponential negative summation of xi over 2 plus or plus, right? Minus minus plus summation of xi, right? So, this is less than k. Right. Um, what else we can do? Right. Uh, we can do a simplification for for here. Right. Um, this one should be equal to two negative n. Right. The power dua naik atas. Right. One power of n multiply with two power of negative n. It should be neg exponential negative summation of x i. Right. Uh, this is one over two. This is one plus or they become negative. Right. So, negative half plus 1 equal to negative half. Right? So, this one is less than k. Right. Now, uh, since we have exponential uh, on the equation, we take, uh, this is step number 3, we take uh, ln for both sides. Right? So, ln 2 negative n exponential. This is a big bracket. Summation of negative, sorry, negative half plus one equal to half lah, right? This is no negative, right? Uh, so this one is to be equal to summation of xi over two, right? This is less than ln k. So um, it became negative n ln two. Uh, plus summation of xi over 2 ln e is equal to 1 less than ln k, right? So we bring all uh, parameter, all the constant on k side. So this one should be summation of xi over 2 less than or equal to uh, ln k plus n ln 2, right? So we from here we know that uh, this is the value of c, right? But uh, 
if you look at on the left hand side dia nampak tak cantik lah because summation of xi divided by 2 so why not we we move 2 over there should be summation of xi is less than 2 multiply with ln k plus n ln 2 right so this is n so this is our new c right so we can say that summation of xi is less than or equal to c right so that's how and that's how we solve for uh, we find uh, the most critical region the most powerful critical region for alpha because we all we did not know the value of alpha so we should stop here right so summation of xi is less than or equal to c so this is the most most powerful critical region of size alpha right if you want to set alpha 0 0.05 then we can find the value of c right So, any questions so far? Kalau simplify sum x tu jadi x, x saja tak boleh lah. Uh, if you want to make it as uh, x bar also can. But uh, the problem is we don't really know the value of uh, sample size, right? So, if you want to divide by n, so it became x bar lah. Also can. No worries. But... Um, I, I think for exponential distribution, we should leave it as summation of x, right? For normal distribution, we can move to x bar because we can solve we can solve for x bar, All right? <clears throat> so I have example number four, example number five, and example number six, right? So I don't really want to solve it for you, right? I going to leave it uh, example number four, five, and six as your homework. Try to do by yourself, right? If you start, please discuss with your clicks. And if your click also start, can you can refer to me? I will show you the answer, right? But this is very straightforward um, a solution, right? Uh, equation. So. I think uh, you should be able to solve it very easy if you understand example number one, two, three, and three, right? Um, so far, before we end our equation, so do you have any question? You can write the question now. Any questions on so far? Question. Please respond on chat room, right? I want to know whether you understand or not understand. Kenapa 22 orang saja, mana lain? Right? So, don't forget to to sign in your attendance, right? Before our class end, right? So, now, example number 4, 5 and 6, make sure you do it by yourself. Treat this as uh, your homework. Make sure you do by yourself and check the answer with me later. Right? Uh, if you start, you can ask a question. Right? I hope you can understand how to how to find the most powerful critical region for hypothesis testing. Right? Yep. Ada dalam yang ini I akan upload kejap lagi. Right? Uh, yang lepas-lepas semua I dah upload dah so make sure you uh, do a revision because our final exam is around the corner and uh, our next assessment in uh, on 20th uh, on this week lah on 20th uh, June eh? 20 June uh, minggu ni lah hari Sabtu ni kita punya uh, third assessment right 
Ya, yeah, I hope uh, masuk chapter number 3 but uh, I think uh, it will cover chapter number 2 as well. Right. I will check again, right, whether it cover on chapter number 3 only or chapter uh, 2 and 3. Right? Okay. So make sure you do a revision because uh, the assessment is very important. If you get lower marks on assessment, it will affect your carry mark and also affecting your CGPA, right? So, so far, last before we end our session, any question or anything you want to ask me? Test marks, we will know. Uh, I can masuk dalam Google Classroom. You will get the test mark once I done with the marking. Okay, I think uh, you have no question. Then uh, I think that's all. We should end our session right now. And thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. <laughs>